All right, uh, this is Mahabeli from the American University in Cairo and with me is Rose, who is gonna introduce herself real quick and teach us this activity, which is the fun activity. How does it go, Rose? Hi, and thanks for inviting me. So fun learning always, always, that's kind of like uh, my personal slogan. Um, but I have a very different way of defining fun. And so while people say that fun starts with the F, um, I say fun starts with the U, you know, just like Simon Sinek says, start with a Y. I, I go with starting with a U and literally you, meaning you, the human, the person, uh, the user. And so the word fun is an acronym for me. Um, starting with the U, uh, user, we're talking about the humans, the people who we're reaching out to and we're all in the business of teaching and learning. So we're talking about our learners, the people who uh, are going to learn from us. And then the F, the function, those are the things that we cannot change. That's the learning objectives. That's the um, situation that we're in, the context we're in, the tools that we have to use because that's what's available, the resources that are available. So function is sort of the general terminology that I use for all of those things um, that that we we have to comply to that we're using because um, it's available to us. Now the needs are the parts that um, that we're going to focus on in this activity. So needs are actually the prior knowledge, uh, the attitudes, the behaviors of the users. So the first step is we have to understand and, and know our learners. And then after that, we have to know what their prior knowledge is, their background, um, and maybe the skill sets the, that they come with. Um, so there is a fun story about that, but I'm going to fast forward through the story. It's called the liquid paper story. So for those of you who are interested in that, you can kind of go and ask me on that later on. Uh, but what we will do is we're going to fast forward to um, the activity itself. And um, the activity, I'm going to put this on grid screen grid uh, mode, you can see there's 14 slides here with different artifacts. There's the vintage telephone, there's a, uh, you know, an array of mobile phones, a television set. Um, some of us may or may not remember the Betamax uh, VHS video. There's this modern thumb drive, flash drive, school bus, uh, microscope, glasses. Um, we've got um, hole punchers, and then the twin of that, which is the hole punch ring binder, a backpack, credit card, uh, marker pens, and the humble pencil and pencil sharpener. So the idea is that we need to examine before you can use these artifacts, what are the skill sets that you need to have um, to be able to use them? And how do these elements actually um, impact our learners in whatever way, whether it's the impact in the classroom, or is the impact anywhere else? So I think we've got two volunteer participants who have already done this. So if I can invite Laura and Alia to unmute, I'm gonna zoom in. And Laura, I think yours was the uh, glasses, right? Yes, I chose glasses immediately. I wear glasses, I've worn glasses since I was four. And <gasps> so I'm very lucky that my parents figured out that I needed glasses when I was little because I could have been one of those children in school who are going to school and don't have the glasses they need and they're struggling in school and it's all because they just need their vision corrected. Um, so I'm very passionate about this. I was excited to see glasses on there because glasses have changed my life. I'd be, I'd be blind without them. And I added a note on my slide. There's a recent study about how a lot of um, older people have eyesight problems that aren't diagnosed and aren't treated, and that this can be one of the most important ways to prevent Alzheimer's. So I included a link to that New York Times article. Oh, that's good. Thank you for that. And and I, I'm one of those kids who didn't know I needed glasses till it was so, so terrible and so bad. Um, so I'm, I'm on the opposite. And it's not that my parents ignored me. It's just that because I am so very short physically. So in the classroom, I was always sitting in front because you know, you're know you supposed to sit according to your height in school. And so because I was always so short, I, I'm barely five feet tall. I was always, always, always sitting in front. And so I never knew my eyesight was bad. And so what are the needs here? The needs are you need to have parents who, who are able to purchase glasses for you and check for you as well. But then in my case, my parents could afford to buy glasses for me, but they didn't know. So, so the opportunity to find out that you need glasses could be 
you know, totally derail, like in my case, because I happen to be born short. I mean, these are these are totally needs that you don't think about, right? Um, but these are needs that are, are, are quite important. And so I know like um, there's a, a campaign that I've seen recently um, where uh, I, I think the government is trying to figure out kids at, at very young age, are they like just genetically small or are they malnutrition? I mean, those are some of those needs that are addressed that that need to be addressed outside of the classroom and before you even think about your curriculum or your 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 lesson plan. So yeah, that, this is a perfect example. Thank you for sharing your personal story when you were four, um, because it opens up a whole a whole um, um, you know battalion of other examples of, of needs that we don't think about. How about you, Alia? What number is your slide? I'm number three. Number three. Ooh, let's see. What was that? What was number three? Oh, the television set. Let's see. How about you let us know um, um, what, 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 why did you choose that and what's your story on that? Okay, so uh, basically, I visit my grandparents every now and then, uh, let's say every week. And I always love listening to their stories about tools they used to use a long time ago, including how they kept, for example, their food cool or uh, and how life was like before cell phones and other advanced technology tools we have nowadays. And so um, it just caught my attention to see the TV. My grandmother, side note, is a huge TV fan. Uh, she spends most of the day now switching through channels, uh, watching uh, cooking, uh, news channels, whatever it may be, a various lot. So I basically feel that this tool, television, uh, the displayed image, in fact, is just an old version. Wait, I don't think this exists anymore. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, because it's using the tube. And and so you, you, you mentioned that you spend some time with your grandparents. Um, you're reminding me my my stepdad, he lives, you know, with my mom now. And and um, he's from an era that was where you have to wait for the program. I mean, mm. I remember that, that, you know, the TV only started at a certain time of the day, it wasn't 24 seven. Mm. Um, and you had to wait for a particular program because it only came on once a week. And until today, my stepdad, he has this mindset that, you know, um, TV is, oh, oh, that's on a Tuesday and that's at a certain time. And he'll, he'll like change his entire schedule to fit <laughs> around that time slot. And I'm like, you know, dad, you know, you can just like TV on demand now, right? And he's like, that concept just doesn't hit. But in reverse, can you imagine if back in the day, if you didn't have that concept, if you didn't have that discipline to wait for a particular day, in a particular day in the week, or, or if you don't have the ability on that particular day to access the TV, because you're on a different work shift or a different, you know, whatever, or, or you can't make it back home in time after school to watch that particular show, then you are lost. You don't have um, the capacity to get that input. So those are some of the needs. It's understanding uh, the limitation. So you're right. This kind of concept of TV doesn't exist anymore because now everything's on demand. Everything is um, also... Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, not just on it's on your laptop or on your phone. You can you can watch anything at any time. So that skill is long gone. Gone. I think the skill of having patience. To, exactly. To I was just going to mention this and the fact that you can't have everything you want. So you have to be grateful for what you have and just make use of what you have. So now you're starting to realize why I'm talking about needs. If a person is born in an era where there is no necessity to wait, yes. no necessity to pre-plan, the mm -hmm. concept of waiting and pre-planning and having patience mm -hmm. is not there. They're and born so into the, abundance, kind of. Right. And so now mm -hmm. the problem is we have teachers who are of a different era a different generation who are of a different culture than the culture of the learner and that is a major problem because if we don't have the same culture whatever we're trying to teach isn't going to match and so I um 
I always bring up this topic of TCK, and I think, uh, you know, Maha, you're, you're familiar with this term. It stands for third culture kid. Um, um, and third culture kid means the, the caregiver or parent uh, came from a different culture than the location or context of the child that is growing up, that is being developed. And so therefore the third culture kid has a dissonance um, and, and so a new culture emerges. Now, never mind a third culture kid in a family, today the same thing is happening in the classroom because the culture that the teachers uh, were raised in and were educated in and have experience in is ex totally different than the culture that the students today are in, especially post-COVID. Yeah, because the kids post COVID, they do not have the same trust. You know, you tell them um, one week from now, we're going to do this, 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 this. But they have grown up for the past two years in a culture where you never know what's going to happen two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. And authority cannot promise you things anymore. Authority has no authority anymore. And so the way that we teach is totally different. Thank you so much, Rose. Okay, one more comment and then people are coming back from the breakout rooms. Go ahead, Ivy. Sure. I was just saying they can also learn how to plan for the worst case scenario since we live in an unpredictable uh, period. Uh, those are some skills they could be acquiring, including resilience, for instance, and believing that less is more. You don't have to have everything to make use of it and to live life the way you want it, you can actually make use of a few things and just make the most out of it. Absolutely, perfect. And that's why I have this slide here because um, to, to be successful now, to be able to design with fun in mind is actually to, to do VUCA, to, to, you know, VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, is to plan for the unthinkable or the unplannable. Um, and only when you design for the unplannable, then you can do the fun part. You know, then it's fun because you're actually um, looking at the needs. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rose. And I remember the first time you did this exercise with me, I was thinking of using it in my digital literacies class as a way to get folks to analyze digital platforms and for whom they are welcoming and for whom they are difficult to use. And thinking about Laura and I were just talking about people with disabilities and you know, realizing yep. that there are certain things that will not be accessible for certain reasons. And then how you as the teacher need to adapt, like you're saying, like everybody's now needing to adapt like on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and or also minute to I minute like, basis, even. or minute to minute even, yeah. And so, and I also loved when we did it in person that you had us go around the room and choose an object from the room to analyze together. So I'm gonna- Oh yeah, there's, there's the many different versions yeah. of it. And, and you know, yeah. this can be adapted to being physical in the room and, and use, and it doesn't always have to be a technology based. It can be, you know, um, just objects and, and to just think more deeply to, to give agency to people you need to to understand the background and the backdrop and you know the context of each person so it's a very flexible activity yeah thank you rose i'm going to stop the recording and bring people back from 